Right after I did that Lotus 49 video, I heard the automation devs that they were bringing in major tire modification stuff. So I held off on making the next F1 car a really long time. But finally now, we have it all. And now I'm going to replicate the first ever F1 car to have downforce. Or the Lotus 49B. Let me touch on that for a second. The Lotus 49B is touted to be the first ever F1 car to have a wing. But this isn't a wing. That is a spoiler. And Brabham had that years beforehand. Huh. Either way, 1968, which is the year we're doing right now, saw leaps and bounds in wing technology. And that led to having wings directly connected to suspension. After all, you don't need to push the vehicle down just the wheels. This was incredibly dangerous. So let's get this going. First, I adapted the old Lotus 49 body, which is exactly like the same as the 49B, and put that through the new Alpha build setup. Then I set it all up, wings and all. And you can see here that I've got attached to the suspension, though things are a little bit jank. Uh, automation doesn't quite save things the way you would like them to currently. But I chose pretty much the closest color scheme I could go with. I got a uh, front wing embedded in there, and then this one we will attach to the suspension. In here, I replicated the absolute beastly engine that this came with. The Ford Cosworth DFV. This engine lasted 15 years in race series. This, this is a phenomenal engine. Now, I wasn't able to get exactly the same sort of power numbers. Usually I have to struggle to reach a power number that these things have uh, listed. But this one, it was kind of like overkill. I had to reduce the amount of power I was making, honestly. But at least give it a listen. That is the sound of the 60s, 70s, and sometimes early 80s. Except for the turbo engines, you know, obviously. If this sort of stuff interests you, we got a manual five speed, no differential specialness here. Wheels are cross flies because they're cross flies until the 80s. Then we made the tires absolutely ginormous at 910s, but then we reduced it with the new setup. Like if you come over to here, you can go in and you can change your tires and all there. So that's how we managed to get the width we needed with cross flies and oh my god it's so gorgeous like the tire bulge the stretched out tire look which now you only really seem to get on drift cars it's just it's gorgeous i love it automation devs thank you so much for this update then the brakes oh wait hold on brakes are no good that should about do it i am going to be not having abs so i don't want to have like incredibly overpowered brakes i want this to be easy to drive as for aerodynamics semi-clad because the thing does have generally a smooth bottom really should be fully clad but eh, whatever it's the only choice we've got wing angles default lots of brake airflow because it is an open wheeler and it does add more drag, yes, but that is realistic to have more drag on this because of this. Otherwise, the drag coefficient we got on the car is very... Wait, why is it 0.5? Damn it, oh, gotta fix that now. Whatever, interior, single seed, all of this sort of stuff, blah, 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 as light as possible, suspension's tuned. And now that we've got it over in BeamNG, I've gone ahead and fixed up to the best of my ability, the collision mesh. I mean, I suppose I could have actually done a little bit better of a job, but it now jiggles considerably less than it does when it's normally done. If you wanna know how to fix collision meshes and all that sort of stuff, here's a link to a video. Here's another video that you may be interested in. But yeah, it still jiggles a little bit, which is unfortunate. The only thing is, is our wing is still connected to the body and not the suspension. Let me show you what I mean. There we go. As you can see here, yeah, the wing is attached to, yeah, not exactly the right places. So we're gonna have to undo that. And we're gonna try to connect it to this down here, these suspension components. This is gonna be a little bit tricky. First, we need to remove all of the beams connecting this to the body. So I unpacked the mod, which currently it says pack to unpack. And then if you wanna pack it, it says pack. So BMG devs, please fix that. Then we're gonna go into the main J beam of the car. I'm gonna go control F and then wing. And we're looking for, I believe, I actually, I don't know, control N. This is wing 84, which is wing eight. If I have a look on the side here, it says that the next lot is down here. This is connecting all wing notes to wing notes. So we don't care about that. This is the sort of stuff we care about. And we're not going to remove all of these. What we're going to do instead is connect them to suspension. And this is probably going to cause a mud 
cohesive problem. I get the feeling the moment any sort of drag is applied to this, it's going to want to roll backwards with the suspension unit and twist it around. So we're gonna leave one connected. We're gonna leave wing 80 and wing 81 and have that connected to A40 and A43. Hopefully this doesn't stuff things up. The rest is gonna connect to these nodes in here. So RH2L, which is really hard to see, and RH1L. Oh God, this is a nightmare. So wing 87, 84, and 83. RH1L and RH2L. And this one could be the one that connects to the node here, which is A43. Oh, this is problematic. All right, let's go see if that works now because it's calling on nodes that are created somewhere else. Control R. And yes, some of our nodes are now connected to these parts down here. Nice. It seems that there's other ones connecting it. Apparently, 80 is connected to A67. Let's do 83. All right, fiddled with them. And yes, good, okay. So there's two going down to here from this angle, and then the other two are going to the suspension components. Oh, this is gonna be super duper jank. But now let's do it for all of the rest. Wing 84. And now I believe I've done everything correctly. The fronts are connected to a body beam and the rest are connected to suspensions. Yeah, this is connected to rear suspension, connected to front suspension. Same here, rear suspension, front suspension, and to the body. Same here, rear suspension, front suspension, rear suspension, front suspension, and body. Okay, now we have done that. I don't know whether it's good or not is about to be seen. So let's get rid of these nodes and beams and driving. So immediately whilst driving, it seems to be actually not terrible. Now I did do a little bit of test drive of this before I did the nodes and it seemed to handle pretty nicely. Oh God. Oh, the body jiggle is much worse than what I had it set to. All right, I might have to do some more work <laughs> with the body jiggle, because goddamn, this thing still jiggles up a storm. Like it's deforming the body. The jiggle is that bad. We're trying to put way too much power through this vehicle. Oh God, the humanity! Oh no! Wow, poop. You know what? I think I need to spend more time on the collision mesh to make this less jiggly. Two thousand years later. All right, this has been a total pain in the butt. So we're going to turn collision information off. I got beam visualization currently set to, to stress levels. So I added a, a bunch of extra beams, which are no weight, but extra like processing power and all that sort of stuff. I just couldn't get the thing to stop jiggling so much. So finally, really the best thing I was able to do is I was able to add beams and cross beams in the front to rear suspension and then turned the dampening all the way up to 400, which is a lot, but still there's just, there's no stopping this jiggliness that happens. We're gonna slow down time to about 16 times and then slam on the brakes. And you're gonna notice that a lot of these beams are gonna be turning red very soon. Just zoom in a little bit. You can see all of these beams starting to become under stress. And the thing is already starting to jiggle and shake. There's just, there's nothing I can do. It's just unavoidable. It's just, the thing will jiggle. There, there's no stopping it whatsoever. I think really my only option is to break out the racing wheel. This is fun to watch in slow motion. Just watching all of the beams do their thing. Oh boy. So I've got my whole thing set up and let's go. Ooh, lots of jiggle, lots of shake. Oh dear. And you may notice, no, I have not done the front uh, steering wheel change. But let's bring it down into the first corner. Now I know that this is not, oh dear, the racetrack which uh, would have been done back in the day. Like uh, they would have shortcut this corner, but I don't know. I just want to do the full track because then there's like a clear comparison between all of the cars. So we're going to try to do the full track, if at all that is possible, which, you know what? I kind of doubt because this thing is super jank. <sighs> I'm going to go full sweat mode and do some practice. I'll be back in a minute. Yes, exactly one minute. I'm not lying. Of course I was able to go in here add in the uh, front brake force, rear brake force, and a final drive ratio in a minute and learn how to drive this car in that amount of time. It totally hasn't been 
two and a half hours at all. No! God, I don't have time to spend this long on learning how to drive a car, but it is super duper jank. But uh, I believe I have got this down right. So you wait until you're in low speed and then you heal and tow. You have to heal and tow in this car. If you don't heal and tow, you are going to have massive stability issues. And then you got to ease on and ease off of things and you got to lift before you break pretty much all the time. Any sort of crest is a death trap in this thing. This thing is basically worse than a bolide when it comes to crests. And then we're going to bring it down. I do not know the names of these straights or corners, but I do know this track quite well. Uh, for those of you that don't know, this is like the premier uh, racing track in the F1 series. And this is the current kind of version of it. It's not the OG version that this thing would have run on. But what I want to do is get a good comparison between all of my old vehicles and new vehicles. And finally, for the first time, we can almost fully floor it through there. Like, that is a really tough one. Now, this is really tricky right here. Oh, concentration. And, oh, okay. We almost did it. Down into first gear. Yeah, nah, I stuffed that up, unfortunately. This next corner is a little bit tricky because it gets a little bit unsettled as we enter. So we're going to slow down a lot for it. And then, no! Shoot! All right, well, now I'm going to have to redo this one again. God, I survived so much. There we go. Did that one a little bit better this time. And uh, I'm going to be real with you right now. I have only actually in the amount of time that I spent practicing, which is totally one minute. Uh, I only actually completed one clean lap. And uh, that one clean lap was actually the only clean lap that I've done from beginning to end. Oh, I really should have maybe even practiced even more, but I just wanted to get this recording done on the off chance that I actually get a clean lap done and miss recording. And here we go, coming down. Oh, I forgot to put the timer up. Oh, shit. Well, that is just an absolute blast. I know the car is super jank and super shaky, but my God. This thing is good looking. I know it's me saying that, so I mean, tooting my own horn sort of thing, but God, I love this. I love this so, so much. It's just, oh my God, it's just every thing is working so well apart from the whole jiggly nature of the car. I would like to put it out there. If anybody can actually do a good job of de-jiggling this without making it uh, wider or taller, because I really want to keep it as narrow and kind of realistic as possible, please do that and resend it to me. Also, if you could have the body end where the body ends and have all of the nodes connect to just the engine and the transmission and all that sort of stuff, so it's like properly realistic, because there's no chassis behind here. That's all just engine and transmission and suspension. Like, if you could do that, please do that and send it to me. I want to try this car in non-jiggly fashion. Also, if you want to know the details I used for this track, I went with a 5.2, just a rough estimate that felt pretty good. Front brake force uh, should be default to 700 now, and I used about 900-ish rear brake force. Yeah, it's a pain in the butt, honestly. But I do want to do a time trail of old automation test track. This is going to be so goddamn hard. Oh no. I'm gonna be honest. I do not know uh, how this car is gonna go around here. I have had so far no practice with this vehicle on this track. And so far it actually feels a lot nicer than the other track. Maybe this actually has less traction on the bitumen. So it's uh, creating less shutter. God damn it. No, I needed that wheel. Honestly, I should probably get a lot more tr <laughs> practice with this car before I bring it out here. Oh God, the thing wants to just wheel spin. But that's fine. If we're just nice and smooth, this will treat us well. Ah, she Oh, you know what it is? I think we still have the gear ratio set to a shorter gear ratio, which is kind of throwing me off. Set to 6.5, so let's, uh, yeah, 5.4, that'll do, whatever. This is really hard to get off the line, but that's fine. So, the reason why I put in the gear ratio selector thingy as well, one, this is a race car, and having extra differentials on would be quite a common thing. 
The other reason I did it is because... Damn it. The other reason is, is when automation calculates what the final drive should be, uh, it takes into consideration wheel size. And the wheel size on this was ginormous. So the diff ratio was a very aggressive diff ratio. So now you're going like 200 kilometers an hour in uh, top gear currently in this car. Now this is going to be tricky. Bavarian Ben catches out the best of cars. Ah! No, I stuffed up. God damn it. I think to avoid shudder and uh, the weight transfer, we're going to try to go to the inside. No! Oh, you know what? Rear brake force is back to what it was. Okay, let's change that back to like 900-ish. Hopefully that will help. And hopefully it won't uh, work like an anchor or a um, handbrake. That's the one. Hopefully it won't work like a handbrake. No! Son of a gun. Screw it. It's fine. We went sideways there, but it's okay. I just want to finish a lap, god damn it. And Bavarian Bend is going to be the absolute nightmare for this car. So whatever it takes, we're just going to get to Bavarian Bend and try our hardest to get through that son of a gun. It's mm, so nasty. Apparently I didn't use the gearbox properly and it damaged it a bit. Apparently engine is starved of oil, but that's fine. We're, oh, we're doing it. Okay, that is a lap done. Oh boy. I hope you guys enjoy. I'm going to go to the edit now and I'm going to do a bit of a comparison of times on the fastest lap. Well, going over the times that I was able to get out of these cars, the 1950s F1 is the worst, but not really the worst. The Lotus 49 performed horribly, had so much more power, had mid-engine, should have done so much better. The others I apparently didn't get times for, I'm not entirely sure about that. The old nail did pretty well, but this one did beat it only by a couple of seconds, but I think given more time, I probably could have done it. But yeah, all of these cars suffer from lots of jiggle. I do, however, feel that this is probably my favorite one I've made so far. It's just a gorgeous car. Well, maybe not in this condition. But for now, I'll catch you all next time. Goodbye.